Let's turn to President Trump signing a new executive order that could roll back the legal shield, the safe harbor immunity, the protection from lawsuits that social media companies like Twitter, Facebook, Google, and other online companies have for third party content on their sites. Now, this legal shield also protects them from lawsuits when they remove or block content on their sites as well. This is happening after Twitter did add fact check labels to the president's tweets about fraudulent mail in voting. And now that move did infuriate the president and his supporters. They're blasting Twitter and social media for censorship and bias. The choices that Twitter makes when it chooses to suppress, edit, blacklist, shadow, ban are editorial decisions, pure and simple. They're editorial decisions. In those moments, Twitter ceases to be a neutral public platform, and they become an editor with a viewpoint. And I think we can say that about others also, whether you're looking at Google, whether you're looking at Facebook. Let's welcome White House economic advisor, Kevin Hassett. It's great to have you on the show, Kevin. Thanks, Thanks so much for joining us. Thank Republicans you. on House, it's good to see you. Now, Republicans on House Judiciary are moving on new legislation to try to strip social media giants of this legal immunity. But, you know, changing the law would require building a broad consensus. The Congress mm -hmm. is deadlocked. The Trump administration can't go it alone, and it's unclear if the SEC and FTC would go along with this. Where, what do you think of this going forward? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that you can get bipartisan support for action as long as the action makes sense. I mean, not always. There are some sensible things where you can't for some reason. But on this one, let's just put it this way, that if you were to do something that was to sort of falsely assert that somebody did something awful, then they could sue you, they could sue Fox. Uh, if you were to publish it on the Fox website, then they could sue you because you had libeled them or something. Uh, but if you're a social media platform and somebody posts something that's actionable, then they're, they're immune. But, you know, the difference between a social media platform and, say, Fox is that you guys have editorial control of what you present. Uh, but if they start exercising editorial control, then the distance between what they're doing and what you're doing becomes more of an open question. And I think it's a good time to investigate and examine the choices that they're making to see if they have become basically publications rather than platforms. You know, the Republicans Liz Cheney and Mitt Romney say the president should stop tweeting about the death of the political aide to, you know, and then blaming MSNBC's mm -hmm. Joe Scarborough over that. Your, what's your reaction to that? There's been a criticism of the president tweeting about that. You, you know, I'm an economist of the White House and I've not been involved in discussions about that. So I, I yeah, I wouldn't comment. Sorry. All right. I want to move on to this. Mm -hmm. You know, Twitter is a privately mm -hmm. owned and publicly, publicly held sure. company. Did you, when the president was basically tweeting about California's push to, to do mail-in balloting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for everybody, uh, we had former vice, basically, let me back up, we, we basically had Twitter using as a fact check for the president's tweets here, analysis columns at CNN, Washington Post, also a story in The Hill, those are not considered red check fact sources uh, mm -hmm. to fact check you know, the president on this or other individuals on this. What was your reaction when you heard that that's what Twitter cited as their fact checks? Right, like fact checking is something that's used as a political weapon. In fact, I can remember when I was here in my first uh, time here in the Trump White House as CEA chair, there was one time when the price of drugs for the first time since World War II declined for an entire year because of President Trump's policies to deregulate uh, drug approval. And at the Council of Economic Advisors, we wrote a little memo about it. And then the president and other people at the White House started to celebrate it. And the uh, Washington Post gave us a whole bunch of Pinocchios for something that was factually correct. And I remember calling up uh, the person who gave us the Pinocchios and, and complaining about it. And, and, and he really didn't have a good response. I mean, the fact is, they gave us Pinocchios for accurately citing the gold standard consumer price index just because it made President Trump look good, so they decided to call it a lie. And so I think that fact checking has become a political weapon. You know, that there are places like the Washington Post that don't always seem to be playing it straight up to me. And so I think that to, to only rely on them for fact checking is something that would probably lead to a political bias. You know, the other thing, too, is back in January, the New York Times published an interview with Joe Biden. Joe Biden said, yes, take away the legal shield, the immunity shield. The, uh, Joe mm -hmm. Biden's agreed to that, and would, it seems like he supports the president here. Also, Jerry Nadler, 16 years ago, said, yes, there is fraud in mail-in balloting. That was the issue mm -hmm. the president uh, was taking on, and Twitter basically put those uh, 
you know, fact-check labeling warnings on the president's tweets. We're going to get into what Jerry Nadler said in the next segment, but your take on what the Democrats were saying there. Right. Well, the fact is that we do, do know that there have been elections like the Al Franken election in Minnesota that were uh, almost decided or influenced by like randomly finding a box of ballots somewhere or so on. And, and so that this is something that's been a problem in the past that, you know, if ballots, if we don't actually have people going to, to the polling place at, and voting or, or doing an absentee ballot, which has, you know, got lots of established hurdles, if we're just mass mailing ballots everywhere, then there is a potential for fraud. And fraud is something that really goes to the heart of our democracy. If people don't trust the election result, then, you know, I mean, basically, then people will start to, to stop uh, relying on their government for advice and so on. And so I think absolutely they have to trust for democracy. We have to trust the election result and to trust the election result. We need to watch out for fraud. And there are definitely a lot of cases of voter fraud. There are lots of people who've been convicted of it and so on. And if we're just mailing ballots around willy nilly, it is something yeah. to be concerned about. Yeah, at a time when Democrats have been complaining and, and Republicans, too, of Russian interference in elections. Now this. I want to move back to social media accused of censoring conservatives. Mm -hmm. We've had conservatives on this show showing us evidence of that, that they were censored. Mm -hmm. uh, it happened on Facebook. It happened on social media. Now, Facebook chief Mark Zuckerberg, he's now in a very public fight, Kevin, with Twitter's Jack Dorsey. Watch Zuckerberg sure. here with Fox News' Dana Perino. I just believe strongly that... Uh, that Facebook shouldn't be uh, the arbiter of truth of everything that people say online. Um, I think in general, private companies probably shouldn't be, or especially these platform companies, shouldn't be in the position of, of, of doing that. But how Speaker Nancy Pelosi is mm -hmm. saying that basically Mark Zuckerberg is pandering to the White House, wants tax cuts. Uh, your reaction to that? Then I want to get your take on reopening the economy. Go ahead, Kevin. Take that Wait, one. Let, let, yeah, honestly, let's let's just go back to the first thing that we talked about. That I think that it's pretty sensible, right? That if they're exercising editorial control, then they should be treated like a thing that exercises editorial control. If they're an open platform for the free exchange of idea and for free speech, then they're not exercising editorial control, and they could be treated the way they're currently treated, perhaps. And so, so I think that you know Zuckerberg's position makes it makes sense to me. That, that, that I'm not sure that Facebook is. A adhering to what he's saying you know that's that's the subject of a, of a future discussion but I think that the, he's correct that that as soon as they start going around and acting like a publication then perhaps they should be treated as a publication okay reopening uh, going forward solid mm -hmm. 3 Q and 4 Q uh, there's sure. pushback there's concerns COVID-19 is going to infect mm -hmm. more people cause more fatalities your take on this Right. Well, definitely right now, the Congressional Budget Office is calling for a really strong second half of the year. And I think that that's consistent with the outlook that we in the White House have right now. And we're already seeing that happen big time in the states that are opening up, that, that economic activity is, is really closing in on where it was at the beginning of the year much faster than we expected. And so I think right now we're on track for, as you know, even Jason Furman, uh, President Obama's CEA chair said, you know, a, a historic third quarter, a historic second half of the year. Uh, you know, that it is absolutely true that one would question that outlook if all of a sudden the disease were to rage back. Okay. We watch every day, we watch the data on that, and right now there, there are no indications that the places that have opened up have turned into hot spots again and so on. And by the way, we now have a much better capability of testing and isolating and so on, and so we're in much better shape if we spot a case now than we were a few months ago. Okay. Kevin, it's great. Kevin Hassett, thanks, thanks so thanks much for, for joining me. us. Please come back yeah, soon. Thanks. Great interview yeah. there. It's right. good to see you.